Aaron amongst others, Brie Larson, Samuel L. Jackson, Ben Mendelsohn, Lashana Lynch, Annette Benning, Clark Gregg, and Jude Law. Directed by Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck off of a screenplay that they wrote alongside Geneva Robertson Dwaret. I don't know how you say that bit of the last name, try my best. This is my review for Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel is the story of Carol Danvers, or Captain Marvel, or Viz, as she also goes by during this movie, and it's her origin story. It's how she came to a get her powers and end up in the part of the galaxy that she ended up in. Um, she returns to Earth in the 1990s, um, cue 90s nostalgia. She meets two-eyed Samuel L. Jackson and a very young-looking Clark Gregg too. And she's here with a warning. The Skrulls are coming and they plan to infiltrate the Earth and take over. And the Skrulls, if you don't know, they can assume the identity of anybody, like a little old lady as we saw in the trailer. So, purely on an entertainment level, I really enjoyed Captain Marvel. I had a great time with it and perhaps most surprising is how quickly this film flew by for me. By the time it ended, like, in my head, I thought we were at sort of coming into the final act. Like, I genuinely, when the credits rolled on this one, I was a bit like, has it been two hours already? Really? Because I thought there was more story to tell. I thought we'd get more than we got. And I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way. It's actually very much to the movie's credit and to the scriptwriter's credit for making this such a pacey film. As I say, it really does just move along. There's not a lot of time to sit back. There's no time to get bored. I was never bored in this film at all. And it was legitimate surprise to see the movie come to an end because I really thought we had longer to go and we didn't. And the main reason for that, I think, is that the writers have decided to make Captain Marvel just a really fun movie. And it is. There is a lot of fun. Um, I had a great time with so many of the characters in this one. I mean, Samuel L. Jackson, this is a very early Nick Fury. Um, I'm not sure that his personality quite ties up with the Nick Fury that we saw later, but a lot of times past, I can forgive that. Um, but it's great fun. Um, him and Brie Larson, the two of them, they've worked together before and they will work together again, no doubt, because they're a great pairing. Uh, they seem to get on really well in real life and it shows. It shows on the screen. Whenever the two of them are just interacting with each other, it's so much fun to watch. They just seem to get each other. They understand each other and they know exactly when to, to drop some comic timings into the proceedings. And yet the pair of them, really good together and individually. Um, Samuel L. Jackson was just great throughout this film, but obviously this is Brie Larson's movie, so it's all eyes on her, really, and I didn't have any issues with her or whatsoever. Um, I loved the performance, um, I loved what we got to see of the character, and I'll get onto that more in a minute, but her performance itself I thought was fine. I thought the script could have done a bit more with the character, I thought it could have given her more to work with, but what she did get, she handled admirably. And um, there's just something really, really cool about Brie Larson, I think. She's just the sort of person that I want to meet up, go for a drink with, and just watch her be awesome. Because all of the interviews she gives, like, she seems to actually give the best side eye in the business. Um, and I respect that. I respect a good side eye. Um, yeah, Brie Larson, loved her throughout this movie. I've loved her for ages, actually. If you've never seen the film Room, um, just to clarify, that's Room, not The Room. Very different. Um, but go check it out just to see what a phenomenal actress that she is. And she can just deliver in all kind of moments in movies. If it's dramatic, if it's serious, if it's tragic, if it's funny. She seems to have the ability to just switch between them with complete ease. And she's backed up by a supporting cast that are just as good. As I say, Seminole Jackson, great. Always fun to see Clark Gregg. I'm looking forward to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 6 starting up again soon. Watch that show, it's brilliant. Jude Law, dependable as ever. Annette Benning, underused, but very, very good. And Lashana Lynch, an actress I haven't really heard of before now. I might have seen her other things, but the name certainly didn't ring a bell and I didn't recognise the face, but she was very, very good in this one too. The relationship between her and Carol Danvers and sort of her daughter as well, the three of them, is really the heart of this movie. Uh, whether it should have been the heart or not, something else we'll get onto in a minute, but it was, and it did work. It did. It allowed a personal connection to this story. And it was just really sweet and endearing to see them all kind of come together as they do. And I thought this film looked great as well. Um, the Cree homeworld, Hala, I thought looked great. Um, I mean, it's no Wakanda, but it didn't look good. It looked visually interesting, which I appreciated. And some of the action sequences in this look great too. There's a brilliant one involving missiles that just looked awe-inspiring. And there's a few nice surprises along the way as well that I won't get into. This isn't a spoiler review, but um, I mean, it's a good job it isn't because I'll probably be talking for about 45 minutes. Um, but there was one twist in particular that I didn't see coming, and I thought it was handled in a really, really interesting way. Um, there was also a twist, um, a fairly obvious one that I did see coming a mile off and it was very, very unfortunate that it went down the very predictable route with that twist. And it's very difficult without talking spoilers, but there are two, I'd say two main twists in this movie. One of them works, one of them doesn't. So while I was talking about how great the film looks in places, it's a weird one because it also doesn't in others. There's, a, it seems to lack a certain style overall, I think this one. 
Um, and there are moments where it's very, very dark, um, very, very dark to the point where it's kind of difficult to see what's going on in a lot of places. And it's a shame because you can have moments where it just looks like, wow, this is a gorgeous looking film. And then you'll get to a bit a few minutes later and it will be the complete opposite of that. So I'm not really sure what happened there. I'm not sure how some of it can look so good and some of it can't. And yes, if you couldn't tell by that change of tone, I'm now going to be talking about the negatives because I do have some. And this is why I don't do reviews as soon as I've seen the film. Um, I normally wait, especially for the big movies, I normally wait a day or two before talking about it because I think it's important to let your thoughts sink in. And I'm glad I did with this one because I came out of it like, yep, loved it. And it was only after sitting on it for a while that I was like, okay, there's some problems. Um, and one of the problems is Captain Marvel herself. Um, she is one of the issues and it's no fault of the character it's the fault of the story because we spend so much of this movie with uh, Carol Danvers not knowing she's Carol Danvers um, not knowing who she is and as you've seen in the trailers you get she gets flashbacks she gets shots in her mind of things that have happened before um, so you know we know she's gonna find out who she is at some point but because it takes quite a while to get there by the time we do it doesn't feel like there's enough time to get to know this character now she knows everything so she's a bit of a blank slate in places and that is by design like that is the movie's fault because it made that choice i think it could have moved things a bit earlier on in the process so we could have got to experience the real captain marvel because i just think the way this was structured didn't do brie larson any favors so i really liked her i loved her in fact in this movie she was everything that i wanted her to be as an actress the things that i thought she could bring to it she did but she could have bought so much more if she'd been allowed to, and she hadn't. So Captain Marvel, in a lot of ways for me, is it's kind of a prequel to the first proper Captain Marvel movie. It's We're seeing this character half-cooked, as it were. Um, when we see her in future installments, when we see a Captain Marvel 2, which I'm sure we'll get, we'll see a much different version of her, I think. We'll see a version that's fully her. Like, she now knows everything. She knows who she is. She can forge her identity properly. But at the minute, in this movie... It feels like setup. It feels like it's a bridge to get to that point. Um, we're obviously going to see her in Endgame. It'll be interesting to see how that character comes across then because a lot of time would have passed since the events of this film. Say so this film's mid-90s. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens when we see her in future films. Um, and I am confident, even though this is a movie I've got some issues with, I am confident with that because I think the character itself is a really, really good one. Uh, Captain Marvel, she's awesomely cool. Uh, when you see her with her full powers, it's great. It's so exciting. Just wish we'd been able to see it sooner. And I'm still not 100% convinced that she might not be too powerful. Um, but I guess that's Endgame's question to answer. Uh, Captain Marvel also suffers from having a bit too much going on. Um, it's, it's a two-hour movie. And as I say, it did fly by. Like, it went very, very quickly um, because there was so much going on. But at the same time, it means that it couldn't give anything its full attention. Um, just for... Captain Marvel herself. There's so many different relationships with her. As I mentioned her old friend. Uh, she's got a being called the Supreme Intelligence, not to be confused with the Great Intelligence from Doctor Who. Um, we also have her relationship with the character Jude Law plays. Uh, there's so many different things going on here, and the movie never really focuses on one. It could so easily have done with dropping one of those characters and just focusing on the others. I don't know which one, to be honest. Um, uh, yeah, maybe I do. Um, but one of them could have gone and we could have had the focus put elsewhere. Instead, it just feels like it's all being spread too thin. It makes it quite difficult to connect on emotional levels to certain reveals and certain outcomes because we haven't spent enough time building up to that point. Um, and it is a problem that happens in films a lot. They just try to bite off more than they can chew. And it just... It could potentially be the fact that... I need to just check something because I know three people wrote the script... Um, but the story, I think there was actually five people involved in putting this story together. Um, story by Nicole Perman, Meg Lefeuve, and then the three people I mentioned. So yeah, five people, and it kind of shows. There's a lot of different ideas seemingly being put onto the page. And we could have done with a couple less. Um, we could have done with just focusing in on certain areas rather than just trying to focus in on everything. And that's one of the biggest problems, I think, with Captain Marvel. Because it does stop you, or at least it stopped me, connecting on that emotional level that I wanted to hit. And it's a shame because the MCU is normally very good at that. It's normally very good at its emotional moments. And this one, it just wasn't. It all fell flat and it's just because they were trying to do too much. And do you like continuity problems? Because if you do, Captain Marvel's got a billion for you. Um, I'm not going to go into them specifically now because, as I say, it's not a spoiler video and a lot of these will be spoilers. Um, but there's a lot. There's a lot that this film brings up um, to do with the MCU past that doesn't quite fit and... There's a few things that I don't think they're going to try and make fit because it's just a fuck up. Um, 
I might be wrong. It may not be a bug up, but it seems like a bug up. Um, for example, the whole issue that people were saying, why didn't Nick Fury call Captain Marvel's help before Thanos went and ruined everything? I still couldn't tell you. That's That was something. That was something in particular that I was waiting for because it didn't make any sense. Uh, the events of the Avengers, the first movie, uh, Ultron, like they, they aren't apparently big enough emergencies to call her. That didn't ring true for me and I was expecting this movie to address it and it didn't. That's not to say that Endgame won't. I just don't know if they will. Um, I don't know if they've got any plans to do that. It strikes me as something that they'll just not bring up again and just try and gloss over and if they do I'll be really disappointed um, and this doesn't affect the rating for Captain Marvel overall but it does leave me with some worries about Endgame as I say I love Captain Marvel as a character but I am worried that she's a bit too powerful and I'm going to be so disappointed if so many years worth of well, like 11 years worth of movies now all wrapped up because Captain Marvel swoops in and saved the day shouldn't be that um it's not her story yet really this is captain marvel is but the avengers endgame is the very final story of all of these characters we've followed so far so i really hope there's going to be some kind of play on expectations there and captain marvel will obviously play a part but it won't be her that saves the day it won't be her as the driving force as the catalyst for thanos's defeat um because be very lazy very lazy if they did so yeah i'm mixed on captain marvel i came out of it absolutely loving it taken a little bit of time i've sat on it like i've called on it a little um but i still enjoyed it like if i was just looking at this purely entertainment wise i had a great time um and it's just you know watching and reviewing so many movies you look at them in slightly different ways and yeah it's just one of those that the more i thought about it the more issues i had and it doesn't mean i think it's a bad film at all like i really really enjoyed so much of it but it's just a lot of problems that the script has i think it could have done with a few less hands on the script and on the story just maybe one or two people tops just to make it focused and it is just a shame that captain marvel's first movie is one that just feels a little bit anticlimactic. Like when we get to the ending, the final act of this one, I said I was a bit surprised it was over. And part of that is because it doesn't do the the typical Marvel thing. Um, it resolves the whole thing on a bit of a joke, on a bit of a punchline. And I found that funny in the moment. I know I'm being vague. Um, I found that funny in the moment, but it just didn't feel like an ending to a movie. Um, it just felt like another scene, really. And yeah, it surprised me when the credits went up because of A, how quickly it went, and B, because that last act doesn't really deliver. There's one incredible moment in those final sort of, sort of 20, 25 minutes, but overall, it just doesn't have that sort of dramatic oomph that, I've never said the word oomph in quite a long time. What oomph? I'm gonna use it. Dramatic oomph that the MCU films tend to have in their final acts. It was lacking something in that regard. Um, oh, and also, if you didn't know, it's set in the 90s. Um, this movie will tell you over and over again its soundtrack is all from the 90s uh there's a lot of songs used in this one in just kind of traditional ways really they don't do much in the way of experimenting with how they use these songs i was fine with it because i love the 90s and i love 90s music so i was cool with it except just a girl is played at one point and that didn't really work for me it's quite on the nose but the rest of them i quite enjoyed but yeah this isn't subtle in letting you know it's from the 90s basically every five minutes it's like Captain Marvel will turn around and just go, 90s. Yeah. Bathe in nostalgia. Does it a lot. Um, I quite like bathing in nostalgia. I was okay with it, but I could see it annoying some. Um, and there's also, I'm not, again, not going to say what it is, but there's a Stan Lee tribute in this that uh, made me quite emotional. Um, I didn't see it coming at all. It's very early on, and it was beautiful. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. I really liked it. Miss Stan Lee. But that was a nice touch, and his cameo in this one is pretty nice as well. So on the whole with Captain Marvel, yeah, I'm mixed, but it's mixed to positive. So I loved Brie Larson. There was a lot of elements of this movie that I did really, really like and love. But there was just some of it that I found to be disappointing. Some of it was a bit anticlimactic, didn't meet expectations in the way that I was hoping they would. Um, so yeah, mixed to positive, but it could be worse. Um, I'm going to give Captain Marvel a 7 out of 10. Have you seen Captain Marvel yet? If so, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Um, look out for more reviews coming soon as well. Uh, quite a few more. We're getting into the proper season for reviews now. Uh, do hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more of them. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next video.